Hey guys, Morten and Henning from Flip Normals here. In today's video, we are taking a look at a death stranding environment that we did a while ago and showing you the process for doing paint overs and grading to your images. It's more like a walkthrough. We won't actually be doing any sort of real-time painting or grading, but we'll take you through all the layers in Photoshop and everything we've done to achieve the look we have in the image. We are really going to be showing you why you should grade everything you ever get out of a 3D software, no matter what it is. So hopefully this video is going to really open your eyes to the possibilities of that. So this is the this is the painted over version, and we have the original down below. So let's just compare where we came from. So this one is the render straight out of Blender. All this is, it's like scanned assets. I didn't model anything in here. I modified the fish. That's about the modeling that I did. <laughs> and, you know, so this is just all real time inside of Eevee. And then we export that out. Uh, takes a few. Well, actually, when you have this much in a scene with this many assets, really heavy scan assets, uh, fog volumes as well. I actually took a couple minutes to render this from Eevee, which is interesting, even though it's real time. I assume they would all just be real time because it's real time <laughs> in the viewport. So you could just take a screenshot of it, but mm. if you want some resolution out of it, then you just have to wait. Yeah, it's it, it's actually interesting. It does some behind the scenes stuff. When you actually hit render uh, with Blender in Eevee, uh, it, there's like some, it, it upresses a few things and it actually turned out to be worse when I actually rendered through the render render, but then you can do a viewport render instead. And it'll just basically upscale to the resolution you want, but in the viewport. So what you're seeing in the viewport is exactly what you're getting. So again, this is the original from Blender and that's the that's the paint over. So let's just go through sort of like the process of getting to something like this. So the important part here is that, you know, I'm not a concept artist, I'm not, I don't paint that much anymore. So being able to do all this in 3D getting a lot of things for free, like perspective, lighting information, color, that, that that really helps a lot. Especially when you're doing an overcast scene like this, where everything is kind of diffuse, it's really hard to make it look good. I tried with, you know, obviously this uh, Death Stranding inspired piece, and I tried doing it with sort of the, the box art for Death Stranding, where Norman Reedus is standing on the beach with whales. I was just, it, it didn't turn out good. So... You know, scrap that idea and then made something on my own. So very first we have our render. And the first thing I wanted to do here was just sort of beef up some of this moss that we have around as well as some general painting. So it's just going in with, you know, some paint brushes, some smudge brushes and just, uh, just adding some, I guess, more organic feel to, to the moss just to make it look like it's not just a CG texture on top of a rock. It's just to break up the surfaces a little bit because that's one of the things that when you have a clean 3D render, everything is very sharp, everything is very perfect. So wanting to go in there and just tone some of that down. Same thing you see that over here on the rocks. It's just about toning some of the perfection down. This is an advantage of using scan asset though instead of modeling it yourself that you do get some variation in it for mm. free because it is does come from real life. And then we actually rendered out two passes let me just disable this so you can better see it. The second pass looks like this. So that was just um, with a lot more intensity on the lights. You can see the fog volumes light up quite a lot more. There's more light on the character in the front. And we also get some more reflections here in the water. So just painting out a mask, like doing a layer mask to, to sort of get rid of some of the detail. So we, we preserve some of the lighting information but we remove a lot of the additional bloat that we didn't really need. And then as if there wasn't enough fog, we'll introduce some more fog <laughs> because fog is always a nice sort of, like a, it's a nice tool to use to create depth, um, especially in, in a concept piece like this based on, on something like Death Stranding. And we continue to do that. There's more and more fog being added on top all the time. So it's just like you can see the fog volumes that we create in Blender here. They have this kind of sharp cutoff and the same thing with the horizon. It's kind of a waste of time trying to get this to fade properly, especially when you're working on a scene with this kind of scale. You can try and cheat it a little bit, but you just got to make a judgment call at some point and be like, OK, this is way easier to just paint out uh, in Photoshop afterwards. This this technique doesn't work as well, we're talking about paint overs, if, if you have something that's moving, the sort of color correction that we'll get to a little bit later, 
that is something that we recommend that you do for everything. But obviously the paint over stuff applies more if you're doing concept pieces or like just finished still pictures, I guess. Now we have a session, like a little session of paint overs just to integrate some of the rocks a little bit better. You can see the main focus, we obviously want that to be here in the center of the image. That's why we have like this kind of obvious arrows kind of like pointing in towards her. That's kind of like the, the idea with everything. Everything sort of like goes like this, right? So everything in the image is sort of like pointing towards the, the subject that we want the, the viewer to look at. Get rid of those again because they're ruining everything. <laughs> I thought it was a big improvement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can see like just painting in. That's one of the disadvantages of using Eevee is that you don't have occlusion in terms of light and shadow. You have ambient occlusion, but you don't have true occlusion. So, you know, some light will always shine through the rocks and you'll have light on the backside of rocks, even though there's no light here, it's in the front. It's just one of the sort of restrictions of real time, I guess. So doing a paint over, we just add some shadows and maybe some reflections just to ground it a little bit more. And actually doing like a general ambient occlusion paint pass is something that I'll do a lot as well. Then we add some more reflections. That's just like a dark brush that we just go like this with, basically blur it a little bit. And then, you know, use kind of pick the same color that the water is just a little bit darker just to give the illusion of, of reflections. We do that everywhere where we can see the rocks sort of like hit the water. And then we just sort of like paint down like that. Pretty pretty effective way to make reflections. And then a general shadow pass. This just set to multiply with a very soft brush. And it's not shadows in the in the typical sense where it's it's a cast shadow for something. No, it's just like a dark piece that goes across big areas. And the reason we do this is to create some bigger forms. It's like we can create more depth within a form by adding big soft shadows to it. Yeah, we're not trying to make this physically accurate. We're trying to make this appealing. And we're now we're, this is cheating territory. Yeah, definitely. Uh, then in true Death Stranding fashion, we'll add some hands to her. This is, this is, <laughs> this is a pretty <laughs> silly thing. We just like find a hand mark from a like, you know, child painting or something. And then just invert the mask and paint around it. That we get this like shadow feel. And then Dirt Woman is just dirt on the woman. There you go. <laughs> Very creative naming. But again... It's just about integrating whatever we have in the scene to feel, make it feel more grounded. And again, as a judgment call where it's like, okay, you could apply some grunge textures in Blender, try to fade it in or paint the uh, paint actual textures for, for the character. But it's just a lot easier just to go with like a grunge brush in Photoshop, just like, boom, there you go. Now she's integrated. You know, so it kind of feels like she, I don't know, maybe she walked through the tar or... She just hasn't showered for days or something. She's like. also so tiny that painting texture maps for it is yeah, almost a bit pointless. Exactly. So there were a couple of people when we were live streaming this that were suggesting that we should texture paint her. But, you know, after showing them that, you know, you just paint it in Photoshop, I think they understand that it's just, especially for concept pieces like this, it's just about the final piece. Don't care about technically how it's done. Uh, and you definitely shouldn't try to spend too much time in whatever software you're doing this. I say it's Blender now. You shouldn't try to get super technical with things and, and see if you can solve everything in 3D. And that goes for when you're doing regular pieces as well. Like if you're doing a, a character piece or something, if you can, uh, quotation marks here, cheat and do it in 2D afterwards, I would definitely recommend that just because it's easier and it saves you time. And the result is probably going to be better. Iteration time is so important here. Now, if you were to do this in texture painting, it would take you almost as much time to paint her body in textures as it would to do the entire scene. <laughs> so now you could make two pieces instead of one piece. And in concept art, this is vital because now you can show two pieces of concept art to a client instead of showing one which is really refined. Then we have some uh, BT strands. It's just... Yeah. If you play the game, you know what it is. It's just lines. So don't worry about it if you don't know what it is. It's just, um, I like the lines as well because they create some verticality in the sort of in the image. It's like it's a nice way to sort of break it up. So we have a lot of these diagonals, you know, that we showed before. But the strands that go down from the sky, they help us create this kind of opposing uh, shape in the image. More fog, again, just to blend it in a little bit more. Then I introduce two pieces of vignettes that sort of like just take away a lot of the focus that we have here. Again, because when you do the real-time lighting in Blender, 
it has a tendency to light everything equally. Sometimes, I mean, of course you can control where the light hits, but it's even with spotlights, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So for this scene, the the light sort of like is placed like here and it shines out like this, right? So it like it covers this entire area just to illuminate this. So it's very hard to have it not affect these parts. So instead of trying to put some planes up and like block the light, we just create a vignette in Photoshop where we just darken it down and that immediately draws the focus away from this and more to the like the, the half upper half of the picture. Then a rainbow, which I know we'll get flagged for because like in Death Stranding, there's no blue in the rainbow. I, I couldn't be asked to remove the blue from the rainbow here, to be honest. Or so just like, yeah, let's just put in the rainbow. <laughs> and you might be wondering, why is it upside down? Well, you should play the game if you Death don't know. Stranding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now for some of the, I would consider the most, some of the most important parts about this, uh, this is the color corrections. So first off, we have a, a levels correction here. And already there, it just creates a lot more interest, right? So we have a semi-flat image. There's not that much variation in the lighting in the image to begin with. So by introducing a levels, you know, we can just crunch the values a lot more. You can see what we've done with the whites here is just bring them down a little bit so they're closer to the blacks. And then we crunch them, basically. So we're limiting the range here. And, you know, we can make this even brighter if we wanted to, but I think this is kind of the sweet spot, as well as pulling up some of the blacks here to really create a lot of contrast. You don't want to do it too much. You want to be kind of conservative with it. And you can see because of the image, the flatness of the image, we actually don't, in the default image here, do this. We have no values that are absolute black. They actually start quite late. And there's no values that are sort of like absolute white that would be over here. All right, so we're trying to get these closer together. So if we pull this one up here, now we have a value somewhere in the image, probably like here and here, that are absolute black. And if we pull this all the way down, we'll have values that are absolute white, which is probably like this area. So that's, that's how that works. Then a color balance on top, just to get away from some of the green in the image. There was a little bit too much yellow greenish feel to it. Maybe like, it's not bounce light cause it's Eevee, but maybe from like the greenness here and just, it was a white light, but it still had this green yellow tint to it. So just a subtle color balance with a focus on blue and just shifts the, the color of the entire image. Better or for worse, looking at it now, maybe I should have gone with more yellows and greens, but we went with blue. <laughs> And then another thing here, it's just that overpaint, subtle overpaint thing you might not be able to notice. Like if you look here in the top left corner, there's a little bit of blue introduced. So this part here is very foggy, very gray. So it's just a way to create some more distance in the, in the sky and a, and a sense of, okay, maybe the weather is kind of clearing up. So we just painted a little bit of blue sky up there in the corner. Very subtle, not, not super massively important or anything. And now for the, I guess the classic, we're doing concept art layer, which is our noise and chromatic aberration. So these have been baked into the image. Sometimes I'll do an overlay with the noise where it's uh, overlay, where 50% gray, set to overlay and do a noise on it. This time I decided to just uh, bake the noise into the image. You do get a slightly different result when you bake the noise into an image versus if you do it as an overlay. So you just kind of like experiment with that a little bit. And then as well, there's chromatic aberration added to this. So you can see that's the shift. Oh, that's that sh subtle shift uh, between the, the cyan and the green on, on the woman there. It's very, it's very subtle. I mean, yeah, when you zoom in like this, you can see it. But the whole point of this is that from afar, you shouldn't really be able to, able to see it. It's more something that you feel. It slightly degrades the image quality, which is what we want when we have a perfect CG render, because otherwise it's, it's perfect CG render and it looks a little bit unnatural. Then I remove some of the noise. Actually, I remove all the noise, I think. Pretty much all the noise. <laughs> I definitely tone it down a lot, like around her. Uh, on her, it stays pretty sharp, but everywhere else we sort of remove it. That's just a uh, specify a focus, like just make the focus a little more clear. That makes her stand out again, more on a subconscious level, more than anything, and then tones down whatever's around her. Finally, we have a tiny, tiny uh, shift in the hue 
yeah, it's it's not a lot. It's just from if you look at the green of the moss, it was a little too blue green now. I wanted to keep the blueness of everything around it, but take the moss down just a little bit so it, it shifts the the blue moss or the green blue moss more towards like a yellow green moss instead. And that's how we end up with that. So if we look at the original, this is where we came from, straight out of Blender. And with all of those passes on top, um, I don't know, maybe like an hour and a half of painting or something like that, uh, we get to this result. Something that's a lot more clear, something that's a lot more focused. And we sort of like, we just guide the viewer to, to look at the subject that we want them to look at. It's such a cool combination when you're using 3D combined with with 2D like this. If you were to paint it like this, there's, I mean, I, there's no way I could even get to this level no, when either. it comes to it. Like, there's so much going on here. You would have to spend as much time painting fish as you would, you know, just <laughs> setting up the entire picture. So it's a really powerful workflow, combining Blender and combining Photoshop like this. Yeah, speaking of fish, uh, the fish here, they're just, they're just particles. Have one fish, one uh, parent fish or main fish, uh, the head fish, and we just scatter them across different places. It's a little bit tricky because there's a lot of different pieces of geometry that make up the, the ground here. So there's one, two, and three here. So these are all distinct pieces of geometry. Uh, but just, I took the fish particle, <laughs> scattered it on the ground, and there we have fish. But yeah, basically, that, that's the process. It's, you don't have to be an amazing painter, as you can tell, to achieve something like this. A mix of 3D and 2D, I think, is definitely going to be the way to go more and more as, as concept art progresses. Studios studios are starting to switch specifically to Blender and, and using um, both EV and Cycles for, for their renders, just because you get so much for free when you do concept art in 3D. There's nothing wrong with it. It's... It, it, there's no cheating. Everything we do in CG is a big giant cheat anyway. The most important thing is just to get to your result really fast. Now I got to this result really slow, so I wouldn't be hired as a concept artist, but it was more as a pr proof, of, proof of concept more than anything. But yeah, if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, make sure to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.